Evening and welcome to our last bulletin for the day. We're live from the News Hub at Adisawe, Kanda and Accra. You can also watch TV3 live on your DSTV channel 279 and on Facebook live as well as 3news.com. I am Stephen NT. You can uh, feel free to post your comments on our Facebook pages uh, at facebook.com slash TV3GH. Let's now start with the major news highlights of the day. The Basic Education Certificate Examination, BEC, has commenced with 90,584 candidates comprising 43,273 males and uh, females sitting in the Greater Accra region. An embattled Boko Central MP Mahama Yariga is challenging the legitimacy of the special prosecutor Martin Amidu uh, bringing charges against him. Counsel for the legislature are... Uh, challenging Martin Amidu's legitimacy to be special prosecutor. And seven months after having been grounded, the bus rapid transit system is back on the road. This time, they would operate only during rush hours. And tonight, World Bank Country Director Henry Kirali has warned that Ghana is at risk of debt distress unless sustainable measures are taken to improve domestic revenue collection. An IMF Fiscal Monitor report released in April projected debt to GDP to hit 62% by the end of 2019. Mr. Kirali was speaking at a media encounter in Accra. Those are our major news highlights. Remember, we're streaming live on Facebook and on 3news.com. You can also hear me on 3FM 92.7. Up next is the big one. Welcome back. Now, 49.5% of eligible voters across the country say they will not vote to retain their MPs in the 2020 elections. That's according to a joint research by the University of Ghana's uh, Political Science Department and the Conrad Adena Foundation. Kwachi Afre Nyama has more on the following report. The research, which was conducted from March to part of June 2019, saw the research team interviewing 100 respondents from each of the 275 constituencies. Now, to break it down further, they did this on an electoral area basis with latest data from the Electoral Commission. They had 20 respondents in five electoral areas per constituency, and they focused mainly on the role of MPs in their constituencies. Although the primary duty of MPs is to make laws, lead researcher Dr. Isaac Ousumensa revealed that most constituents are more interested in seeing their MPs undertake developmental projects. We are told that MP is supposed to be an advocate for development. Nationally, 50.8, more than half of Ghanaians are telling us that MP, your role is to what? Develop. You are advocate of development. That is the role of member of parliament. Last week, there was a program organized by the Carlos Bishop when the first deputy speaker was telling us his experience of going to his constituents, whereby he met the people and discussed issues about parliament with them. They were not interested. They were interested in the school classroom when you are building it. One of the major concerns raised by constituents was that many MPs don't visit their constituencies. I'm told that you need a lot of money to be able to visit their constituencies. But the truth is, whether you like it or not, members of parliament, we expect you in the constituency. Now, we have information in some electoral areas and some constituencies that since some members of parliament were voted for, they have not done what we call thank you tour. Going back to say thank you people for voting for me to serve you, some members of parliament are yet to do that. A member of the research team, Ketri from Pond, said 49.5% of constituents across the country said they won't vote for their incumbent MPs in 2020. According to Ketri from Pond, experienced lawmakers enjoy more support from constituents than first time MPs in the legislature. It is the most garbage that people will think people say they should vote, they should vote, they or so, 
The people support them, and they should go again. On the other hand, of the 121st FM, about 80, there are people who say they should go again. Some members of parliament who were present during the presentation indicated that the research is a great source of feedback for them. Take for instance that assuming my conscience that they've not been seeing me, if you want to win again, what will you do? I will start going there. At least it tells you what your people think, whether uh, they are justified to think the way they think, uh, whether uh, they appreciate your work or not. Uh, whether you have a difficulty that they don't know, whatever it is. According to the findings, Education Minister Dr. Matthew Pukuprempe is the best performing minister in President Ekufuado's administration. Without a doubt, 18 months is a long time in politics and a lot could happen within that period. And certainly, no certain member of parliament would want to dismiss the outcome of this research done by a team that accurately predicted the outcome of the 2016 general election. For TV3 News, my name is Kwache Afreniyama. On here in the studio, I'm Stephen Nt. Let's uh, get quickly onto the telephone lines and speak with uh, team uh, leader of the team, team lead and a senior political science lecturer at the University of uh, Ghana. All right, let's get onto the telephone lines. We now have the uh, team lead of the uh, research uh, the political science lecturer at the University of Ghana, Dr. Isaac Ozumensa. Good evening, Doc. Thank you very much. Uh, good to have you. Good evening, my brother. So this research of yours, can you tell us expressly what it sought to achieve? Please, can you come a bit clearer? I'm, I'm asking, question, sir. right, so I'm asking if you can tell us expressly what the research sought to achieve. Oh, well, the main objective of the research is to be able to know the performance of the members of parliament from all the 275 constituencies in Ghana from the perspectives of their constituents. That's all. That's all, right. And we're, yes. right. and we're told that you, you sampled uh, about 11 respondents uh, from all 275 constituencies, correct? We sampled 100 respondents per constituency. Per constituency. So this is uh, through a random uh, sampling, kind of, so that, for example, if you went to a house one, you don't necessarily have to go to two. You go to five or ten, six, and come back to one. That kind of situation. No. What we did was that we selected the electoral areas first. We to call every constituency is divided to electoral areas. And we selected electoral area, five electoral areas per constituency, and then we interviewed 20 people per the electoral area. And in that electoral area, when we went to the electoral area, we leave the first five houses and then go to the sixth house and then still leave some space in between and go there. There are some uh, electoral areas that are made up of three villages. We make sure that all the three villages are are integrated in that study that you are doing at that point in time. Well, I, know, I know that the University of Ghana Political Science Department over the past uh, few years have engaged in uh, researches of this kind, most of which have been extremely accurate. But there have been questions raised about the representativeness of the sample you use and coming up with this figure of 49.5% uh, deciding that they will not retain their members of parliament. That's, that's that's a bit like 50 percent more almost half that's very worrying isn't it it is very worrying for all of us then especially if you have more of the first time members of parliament people are not retaining them it's very worrying for democracy of this country and and you 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 get the sense from the outcomes of your research that many of the respondents you spoke to perhaps didn't have a fair understanding or appreciation of exactly what an MP is elected to do. Some thought, and they still think, that uh, the MP is supposed to champion developmental projects. This is erroneous, isn't it? And if that is how the majority of the 49.5% uh, you interviewed think, then uh, we're not doing too well with information getting down to the grassroots for people to understand really what the MP does. No, you see, that has been theories of democracy that MPs are not supposed to do development projects. This is why we learned in O-level government, A-level government, and in the Department of Podcast Science as a student of Podcast Science. 
But in reality, MPs in Ghana are supposed to provide development projects because the basis of campaign is on development projects. So if you campaign on development projects and you come and tell us that now the MPs are not supposed to do development, it, it has not wash here or there. Because fundamentally, when a member of parliament is campaigning, he's going to tell the constituents that I'm going to build this classroom for you, I'm going to build this road for you. So when you are elected, you, you cannot move away from that side of development. Uh, objectives are not part of my work. My work is to make laws. My work is to represent you and scrutinize legislation to be appropriate for you. These are all your in, in reality, on the ground, we expect MPs to lobby for projects. We expect MPs to be able to go to the ministries and champion causes of the interest of the people in their constituents. They expect MPs to be able to help them get jobs, either in the police service or immigration service or uh, forestry attendance or whatever it is. So MPs' role is not only about making laws, they're also seeking the interest of the constituents. So, so, so do you get the impression from the outcomes? I, I keep referring to the outcomes of your research uh, because uh, if we don't speak to the outcomes, then we, we are as, as well speculating. Uh, did the outcome of the research perhaps give you the indication that the respondents are becoming more matured and more uh, perhaps appreciative of the essence of uh, local local level uh, participation in, in politics for which they are now becoming more forceful in their demands. I don't know whether I put that right. Yes, you are right. My brother, the truth is that the time whereby we voted for member of parliament or we voted for government and then the government tells our story and they go and sit down four years, they come, we renew their mandate. I think it is past and gone. Ghanaians are becoming more understanding of the issues. Ghanaians now know what MPs promise and what the MP is supposed to do and what it's unable to do and compare the MP to the adjoining constituency and see what the adjoining constituency member of parliament is doing and compare to other uh, members of parliament that are also ministers or not ministers, either in opposition or not in, in opposition, what they're able to do and what they are, what they are unable to do. So uh, now citizens or if one voters are really matured now. And they really expect members to be held accountable. And that is the way we have gotten to now. And so, we are very happy about that. So would you say the, the, uh, the, the research... Uh, points to negativity or positivity because uh, some of the MPs I've, I've spoken to obviously are worried uh, because they get the sense that perhaps they haven't done enough education uh, for people to appreciate what they're doing and also putting the blame squarely on the doorstep of the NCC and all of that. Would you say this is good, good news? I mean, the, the research outcome is good? I think it is good news for Ghanaians and it's also good news for members of parliament because we have still so many months now to go to the elections in 2020. We have still some time now for political parties to conduct their primaries. So if you're a member of parliament and we voted for you in 2016, and you have not seen the need to go back to the people to say even thank you to them or visit them, uh, then you have the opportunity now to do that and tell yourself that, hey, my brother, if I don't work very hard, I can lose my seat. I don't think that it is good for the Republic of Ghana and therefore democracy in Ghana that every four years we lose a lot of members of parliament. It's not good for us. So we have, it's a wake-up call for them. It's all for them. They can do what is needful. And if they're able to do that, I am very optimistic that we may retain most of the members of parliament now. All what right, uh, Dr. Isaac goes to Mensa. We're grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Isaac Osumensa is team lead of uh, research into the performance of members of parliament. Let's move away from uh, that research to some other stories. The basic education certificate examination BC has commenced with some 90,584 candidates comprising 43,273 uh, males and 47,311 females sitting in the Greater Accra region alone. Wendy Lai visited uh, some centres and has filed this report. Out of 266 candidates registered, two candidates were absent, 139 boys and 123 girls from nine schools were at the St. Theresa School. The one hour, 45 minutes English paper one and two comprised objectives and written. The first paper ended at 10.45 a.m. As they left the exam center, their body language could tell the outcome. 
I was also happy when I also saw the paper because I knew I have learned very well and I had to put in my maximum best. The paper was okay. Um, I learned how to, I didn't find any difficulty in answering any of the questions. Supervisor at the centre, Rita Kunedu indicated no mishap was recorded. For now, this being the first day, we've not gotten any uh, incident. The head of public relations unit of the Ghana Education Service, Cassandra Chum Ampofo, noted the Ghana Education Service was assisting WAIC to ensure the smooth running of the exams. We are out there in all the 10 regions. We've sent our staff, although we have our regional and district staff, we've beefed up the staff there. We have about 50 of our men from the headquarters joining them to go around and monitor. She spoke on the alleged leaked questions circulating on social media. We have not heard of any leak. They just finished the first paper. We have not seen, we have not heard. And so if, should we hear or see, we will revert I mean, to Waiyeke. 517,333 candidates from 16,871 basic schools nationwide are eligible to sit this year's examination. Right, so let's move from Accra to Kumasi, where the Metro Education Director, Martha Ousu Ajimai, has expressed disappointment over the absence of a candidate from the examination due to pregnancy. 104,000 uh, candidates comprising 53,000 males and 51,000 females are sitting for the BEC examinations in the Ashanti region. Here's a report by Ibrahim Abubakar. The BEC candidates in a rainy day filled the various examination centers when the news team visited the centers within the Kumasi metropolis. Some candidates had absented themselves from the centers due to pregnancy and other issues. Kumasi Metro Education Director Mata Usu Ajiman expressed disappointment over the issue but added candidates should stay away from examination more practices. That shouldn't have prevented the candidates from writing. You could have been here and one also were told the parents are saying he is underage and um, we will look into that. Kumasi Metropolitan Chief Executive Ose Asibi Entry was impressed with the turnout. The only challenge was the lightning which they will be improving upon it next time. Some candidates shared their experiences after the first paper. Okay, it wasn't difficult so we were able to do it. It wasn't dangerous to us at all. It was very calm. It's good. So you think you can make it to them? Yeah, I can make it. And uh, in Accra now, uh, our reporter Josephine Armstrong tracked two special needs candidates who are taking part in the examination. 16-year-old Messalina Akofo was diagnosed with cerebral palsy at a young age. Although she was not given any special treatment from the West African Examination Council, she has braved the odds to write the basic education certificate examinations. She started and ended with the regular students. A student with cerebral palsy may find it difficult to write fast and legibly. Her close friend, Klenam Azigi, also a candidate, told me Messalina's only challenge was her difficulty in writing. She shakes when she's writing. But for Messalina, even though she encountered some difficulties, she is happy writing her first paper. Cerebral palsy is the general term for a number of neurological conditions which affect movement and coordination. Some people with the condition may have communication and learning difficulties, although the intellect is often unaffected. The news team later moved to the Shaiman municipality where another special needs student was writing the examinations. He could see, speak, hear, write, but could not read. So he was made to use an audio device. They have not bought dash of the two prescribed books. A. Neither. B. Either. C. None. D. O. C. Alex is an officer from the headquarters of teachers with special needs. He has a little challenge 
And so he has been giving accommodation and remediation. The intervention is that he should do the exam with the audio recording system. And it's because he has a difficulty with reading. And that in special education, that uh, we call it learning disability, we call that one dyslexia. So dyslexia is a difficulty with reading. And so he will not be able to read quite well or fluently, but he is able to comprehend if it is read to him, and he would answer it also by saying it and it's being recorded. It is expected that the implementation of inclusive education policy would help to promote a healthy education system. Very interesting. Uh, this is still News at 10 live from the News Hub at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. You can also hear us on 3FM 92.7. We'll be right back with more news. Please stay. Welcome back. Now, seven months after having been grounded, the Bus Rapid Transit System, BRT, is back on the road. This time, they would operate only during rush hours. Evelyn Tingma reports. The bus rapid system was introduced somewhere 2016 and about 245 buses were brought in called the Ayalolo buses. Now somewhere last year, majority of the buses were grounded due to lack of funds to run the services of the buses, to pay staff and to buy fuel. Well, today we are told that the buses are back on the road. We will be finding out from officials as to whether lasting solutions have been found and if the buses will not be grounded again. Officials will not speak on camera, but information we gathered indicates the buses on the Accra Amasaman corridor started work on Monday, June 10, but the Accra Kaswa shuttle commenced work a month ago. Our source indicated the financial challenges, including staff salary areas, which confronted the bus rapid transit system, leading to its suspension, have not been addressed, but management has has decided on a different schedule. The buses would now operate only during morning and evening rush hours instead of the previous schedule where they were deployed throughout the day. At least 15 buses would be deployed in phases to make the system effective since there is no support from government except from the sale of bus tickets. According to the source, 45 of the buses have been sent to Kumase upon the request of the Kumase Metropolitan Assembly, while services on the Adenta Accra and Dowenya Accra corridors would commence soon. Meanwhile, designated lanes for the bus rapid transit system have been taken over by some motorists. Right, and that's how we wrap up with News at 10. Thanks very much for making time. On behalf of the crew, good night. There is more news at 3news.com.